First up, a bit of a shout out to Michael Bowerman and his podcast crew who gave us uh, well a little bit of a shout out. Yeah, they gave us a mention on their uh, their podcast, which was really nice. So we'll put a link to that down in the description. Please do go and give that a watch. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Switch Up. Glenn and I are here to have a look at some interesting games. Yep, this is the series where we just pick a few games that we've played recently, free each, and we just have a chat about them. Basically, it's as simple as that. Simple as that. Lovely. All right. If you want to save five percent on your eShop credit, use code Switch Up over at SwitchUp.gg using uh, code Switch Up. I just said that. Didn't I? I'm pretty sure you did, but there you go. <laughs> Say it twice, why not? <laughs> so which games have we been playing recently? Well, let's find out. All right, then, the first game we're going to talk about, because we've literally just been playing it, or I've been watching uh, Glenn, boss or boss, <laughs> and it's Fashion Police Squad, which was one I really wanted to review on the channel, but we didn't get a chance, did we? No. Um, I mentioned, I think it was in this uh, episode last week, so, or a couple of weeks ago, sorry, that we went to Germany, mm -hmm. and I was playing Mario Odyssey on the fly, <laughs> and you were playing this game, weren't you? Yeah, so this has uh, very much an old-school retro first-person shooter style into it. It's got that weird mixture between the flat sprite characters that you're fighting against and the 3D world um, that you would have found in something like Duke Nukem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and, it, and it is very fun. Now, you've just played this. What did you think? Yeah, really good game or from the little I played of it. But so basically, as, as Mark just said, it's a, a first person shooter, but the, the catch is that you're a member of like the fashion police or something. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? And you're shooting people with uh, with guns that will improve their fashion sense. And then they kind of, they stand on the spot dancing around happy that you've released them from their, you know, their fashion faux pas. Yeah, all, all the enemies you'll face are basically fashion faux pas that we would have known, like like a baggy suit or a shell suit, things like that. Yeah, socks with sandals. Socks with classics, sandals, yeah. riding around on a silly little scooter. <laughs> and every weapon and ability you have has is used to tackle a different enemy, isn't it? Yeah. So again, just from what I've seen, there was a, like a it looked like a Tommy gun, but mm -hmm. it was a, you said it was a sewing machine. Yeah. And uh, there was one like a paint paintball gun or something and yeah. there were like drab people that you could uh, add some colour to yeah really just very quirky very fun um, but quite difficult like mm -hmm. it, it did have yeah, yeah. that old school first person difficulty still yeah. didn't it yeah it's pretty brutal I mean in our defence the footage you're seeing we've just started a new 8-bit do controller one of the little uh, what is it SNES controllers yeah, like SNES a... sorry <laughs> I get told off for said SNES <laughs> one of those little controllers so uh, if we're not amazing that's exactly why yeah I mean you, with, uh, with the Joy-Con yeah. And a bit of gyro, you'd be oh, uh, you'd be yeah. laughing, wouldn't Honestly, you? Honestly, people would be like writing off to Nintendo. You should employ this too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. But there are some um, platform uh, platforming sorry sections, aren't mm -hmm. there? Again, from what I just saw, where you're swinging across on like your your uh, your belt. Yeah, as a whip. they are fine. I know I'm not making them look fine here in the footage, but they are. You you get a little um, symbol that basically shows you when to fire the whip off, and then there's a bit of momentum to it. You can actually do the whole full swing, like every child wants to do when they're a kid on the <laughs> set of swings. Yeah. But overall, it's just a really good game. I'd highly recommend this one if you find it at a reasonable price um to be honest i'd buy this at full price i think it's not that expensive yeah i, I again i i just uh, jumped in for a boss fight so not you know not the ideal yeah. time to jump in but it's once close. you got the, it was close actually if you're, <laughs> you're, you should be seeing it now this is the second time in the yeah. last month that i've beat a boss but died at the exact same moment <laughs> one was in my recent uh, backlog video i had to redo the boss on that one but this time thankfully it worked in my favor and it counted it as done but uh yeah it was pretty tight yeah, so that's the first game. What we, what we got next, Glenn? Lovely. So the first one I'm going to talk about for the games I've been playing is Signalis. Now, this released, it was a few months ago, uh, I believe, but it's only recently got a physical release, right? which I did pick up. Now, we have reviewed this on the channel, albeit it wasn't me personally that reviewed it, and it's a it's a top-down survival horror game. Okay. So Resident Evil will be the game that springs to mind in terms of that you know, horror aspect, albeit, as I said, it's top down yeah. and not the classic kind of fixed perspective, mm -hmm. you know, tank controls. But another game I suppose you could kind of class it like is like the early Metal Gear Solid game. I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah, just because there's a lot of stealth. Well, it doesn't have to be. You know what it's right. like in survival horror. You want to conserve your ammo. Yeah. So at times you're trying to stay out of the way of the enemies. Okay. And again, because of that, that perspective, mm. it just reminded me a little bit of, of that too. Um, so you're, you're a... I believe you're like an android or something like that, right, and okay. you, you, you're looking for someone on this uh, this colony or this this uh, this district planet, and obviously something's gone awry, mm -hmm. and uh, you're trying to work out exactly what. And it's, it was funny with this one because I took it. We went away to my wife's parents to, to the in-laws for a couple of nights, a couple of days, and um, this was the game I was playing at night of an evening. Huh. And for two nights in a row, I fell asleep. You know when you fall asleep with a switch and it like sort of whacks you in the face as you're in bed. <laughs> 
and I just couldn't, I, I, was, I couldn't remember what I was doing and I was really struggling to get on board with it. And then I got home and played it properly and it just mm. clicked. Right, you know? okay. And then you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm with, I'm with this now, you know? I've heard a lot of people say this is one of the best survival horror games they've played in years. What makes it special? Why is this one, why is everyone banging on about it? It takes what made the early Resi game very, very good in terms of its survival horror. Right. element so obviously controls are always an issue with mm -hmm. that series until you got on board with it but you know um, item management yeah very scarce ammo mm -hmm. enemies that are pretty relentless to be honest you know typewriters you use yeah you, you know the uh, the equivalent of a typewriter although you don't have limited you know you just have to pick up the ink ribbons yeah and you can only save so oh, many yeah, times I remember that. so it, it does away with that which is a good i think it's a you know a smart move we don't need these that. days don't need that but you you log into a computer or something whatever it is and, and save it that way um storage boxes you know mm -hmm. all the classics um and also it does things that were like for example the resident evil remake on the gamecube yeah introduced the idea of these zombies once you'd killed them reanimating and coming back stronger right and you had to really think about do i need to kill this enemy because i know they're going to come back yeah well, i think you had to like pour petrol on them and, and set my light to stop that from happening sheesh and this game does something <laughs> similar so it's just cherry picked Little a bits. lot of yeah from the classics but also some of the the more modern bits as well okay and it just it just works very well it's, it's got the atmosphere like i say you're on this kind of uh, it's like a workstation and you're picking up memos of you know piecing together the story mm. of what's gone wrong some puzzles in there some very good puzzles actually I've been quite impressed with the puzzles because again with the old Resi games it was very much about push this thing into this space yeah. wasn't it yeah. you know? whereas here you know you're, you're finding little clues you've got like a radio and you can change the um, the frequency mm -hmm. and sometimes that will help you solve some of the puzzles it's just very well thought out yeah yeah so, it's, so in terms of storyline without spoiling it you, you go into this wherever let's say space station wherever, wherever it is yeah do you meet any other npcs along the way or is it all through notes there's one that i've met now again like i say because because <laughs> i kept falling asleep during the first couple of hours of it i think i might have missed a bit of the story i might right. have to go and read like the blurb and just <laughs> make sure i know what is going on he's going on but there there is this one character that you've met a couple of times she kind of turns up and i believe she is one of the um <clears throat> one of the androids that hasn't turned rogue okay and she's kind of sitting in a room and she's saying like, i don't want this to happen to me i'm scared yeah so it looks like there's a problem with either their programming or something that has affected them or you okay. know but i don't know any more than that i might have been told more like i said and just missed it but that's the basic premise. if you get to a room and there's uh Crichton, you're not actually playing a <laughs> they, game they should do that they shouldn't should, they you know, how funny would that be oh. like if you're just playing along and he just turns up with a mop like just, just <laughs> <Sneak mop. heed. laughs> oh man that should be in there as an extra that'd be great <laughs> lovely next up then glenn we have one of my lowest review scores in a long time. Yeah, yeah. It is the game Oni, wait for it, <laughs> Road to Become the Mighty Estoni. I like that. Do you like that? That's yeah, a ring, doesn't it? It does have a ring to it. Using the same word twice in the title is... <laughs> yeah, that's no, good. I like it. It's, it's bold. Very bold. Very bold, yeah. Now, this obviously is about... Well, it reflects the story of... Momotaru. That's the one. The boy who was born out of a peach and then goes to the island of demons to essentially vanquish them. That's why well, it's the demons training ground in the story. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, you play actually a half boy, half demon in this story. Right. Uh, so you want to be, that's, that's where it says becoming the mightiest Oni, because you're actually half Oni, I see. half boy. Now, unfortunately for the game, it makes a lot of missteps. I was reviewing this one this week and I sent Glenn just a snippet of the audio, didn't yeah. I? It has, I don't, I don't know how else to say it, an appalling soundtrack. Yeah, it's weird. I, yeah, like you say, so you sent me uh, just a clip of you playing it and obviously I can hear the music. And it honestly sounded like, like a montage, you know, from a, an 80s movie. Movie. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> oh. it's, it was just weird. Yeah, it was. It was. I don't know. I mean, it's, maybe it's title music or something. You know, when the, you start a game and they sometimes put in um, almost like a juxtaposing song, and it it it's heightens the experience because it's a one-off, and yep. it's like, oh wow, okay, that's weird. That's, yeah, yeah, I didn't quite yep. expect it, but it added a flavour to the game. Yeah, horror games do, uh, or horror movies do that. Like, Loads yeah. of things do yeah, it, yeah. and it works well. But if you then play that song, which is only a minute long, over and over, over yeah, and yeah. but the worst part of it is it doesn't even finish its loop. Right. Whenever you talk to a character or whenever you come back from a mission, it will restart. Ugh. And the start of it is like, da -da 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 -da. And you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, he's back again. And honestly, I was smashing the mute button and like <laughs> running around the room, almost uh, crying. Oh, dear. And, and I've never had a game where I've had to do that. Like, there's somewhere we've reviewed over 700 games where they, you know, the music's quite annoying. Yeah. I've never really been sat there like, I can't play this anymore. No, it's, it's killing me. It's weird because I reviewed a game last month, Trek to Yomi. Yep. That, mm, not stylistically exactly, but in terms of 
of you know the, the world you're in quite similar uh -huh. and the music 100% there mm. as you just said you know added to the experience and it, it complemented what you're seeing on screen yeah and that's the way to do it now as far as the actual game goes you know there's a lot of people in the comments that are like oh let's hope this is a baldo you know they patch it up i don't think this is a case of patching it up really right. and, and to be fair to baldo they changed some gameplay mechanics so they could do that here but it's core intrinsic loop like it's very hard of baldo stayed the same here it's heart is what you'd have to change. Right. You know, it's like so formulaic. It is go and fight these seven missions, sorry, these 12 missions in each of the areas, unlock the next section, go there, do exactly the same thing. And it's like the core combat. I don't think they, I, I think they would struggle to mm -hmm. improve its formula. Uh, they could, I don't want to write them off. Um, and it is uh, the first game from, I believe, one of the studios involved here. And and I said in the video, there's a lot of promise. Yeah. Like to produce something that looks like this, yeah, it has yeah, that yeah. flow of combat and there's a couple of nice ideas. W with a little bit of writing on the on the ground level, it's core DNA, they mm -hmm. can make something amazing. It, they've just got the, you know, the mechanics are, are all wrong. Okay, Did, is it a case of biting enough more than you can chew? So if they if those mechanics had stayed the same, but the game wasn't quite as long, so yeah. would it, is it that it outstayed its welcome or is it just... Do you know what, I actually think it's a case of biting off less than you can chew. All right, it's okay. going, well, let's limit what we're doing to just these things. Let's go. We've got the combat. Yeah. We've got the, the, the very fixed area and we've got a very uh, repetitive loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But actually, the mechanics they built, they could have gone further. It's they could simple. have added. It's too simple. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. They could have done more. I've never heard that biting off less than you can <laughs> share. <laughs> no. That's like me every meal. <laughs> Well, no judgment. <laughs> okay, all right. Oh, well, that's a shame. That's because it did look lovely, to be fair. Mm. Um, but fair enough. Right, my second one then, uh, another one that came out relatively recently, but has been out before. This is the uh, Metroid Prime Remaster. I'm glad you talked about that because I was playing a bit of that again last night. Oh, yeah. It's just so, so damn good. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good game. Very good game. But what intrigues me about it, I, I, first, before I say anything, actually, mm -hmm. I know obviously you've played it now, but did you play it back in the day? No. Good. I, I, I like to see that because I did. And it's yeah. just, you know, I'd like to get a, a different perspective on it because when it released on, on the GameCube, mm -hmm. um, obviously Metroid to that point had been, you know, side on exploration based. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what became known as Metroidvanias. Mm -hmm. But when this release, obviously it was first person and it is a first person shooter, don't get me wrong, but it's it's not a traditional first person shooter, is it? It's very much still an explorative experience. Yeah. It did this divide opinion? So when it came out, obviously this was such a leap from Metroidvanias. Yes. I know what human beings are like. Yeah. Was it like the Marty McFly guitar moment? It was too soon. Um, no, no, it was uh, universally praised as far as I can remember in terms of reviews. Everyone that I knew around the time that bought it loved it. Okay. I still then and still to this day prefer the side on games. Yeah. That doesn't just, surprise me. Yeah, that's just my personal preference, but that doesn't take away from this game at all. It's a, it's a fantastic game. But what I love about it the most actually is how cinematic it is. Mm. I don't necessarily mean in terms of cutscenes, albeit they are in there. Yeah. You know, you, you do feel like you've landed on this planet. Yeah. And whereas with see see the Metroid series always had that, mm. or at least or certainly had it from Super Metroid onwards. They tried it in the earlier games, but this is uh, Super Metroid was where they, they nailed it, you know, yeah. like you, you uh always started overpowered and then you lost your abilities mm -hmm. due to something going wrong. There were a lot of epic moments in Super Metroid that the Super Nintendo did a very good job of conveying. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind the you know the uh, the hardware and Prime really did take that on yeah and you do feel like you're there and and you know the scanning mechanic albeit I do feel it becomes a bit tiresome after mm -hmm. a while I do think it does a good job of again uh, you making you feel like you know nothing of this world mm. of this planet you know and, and having to garner information from what's around you so yeah in terms of the, the the visual of it I think what it does well that a lot of games take for granted and any like even newer games do this is do you remember back in the day you'd have a stage and it would have a theme yep. And that theme would be a very set color, or yep. set, you know, assets, things like that. Mm -hmm. Here you're moving from space to space and they're completely different. You're going from that jungly start bit where you land to a really sandy part to yeah. almost like ancient um, Aztec style. And it just shifts constantly. It does. Which I was quite surprised by. Well, that's again, that's taken its Metroidvania roots. Yeah. Because in Metroidvanias, generally you have areas that you cannot access until mm. you, you gain a, an ability or, or find, you know, an item of some description, which Super Metroid did. You yeah. had like the various suit um, and, you know, your, your, the screw attack and this, you know, all these things. And it meant that you couldn't go into an area where it was hot you know there was fire yeah as soon as you walked in your health would deplete and you'd have to get out quick until you'd come back later and obviously this carries on that mm -hmm. trend whereas if you go somewhere too early you won't necessarily be able to access as much of it until you find right you know the necessary gear so it, it did it, it kind of that's what i mean you know it is a first person shooter but it, it took that metroidvania heritage mm -hmm. and implemented it into an fps in a way that i don't think had ever been done at the time yeah. i don't really think 
that's been done many times since. No. You know? No, I'm going to put a bit of a red herring out here. Mm. And I know I've spoken about this before, but it, I do think it's kind of important. Yeah. With obviously something like this, it's very easy to say, well, that's it. We don't need a like a Switch Pro. We don't need a new console yeah. because it looks so good and it runs so well. Um, but there is the argument that to get to this level of quality on the native platform, there's got to be some serious funding behind it. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with a lot of third party developers. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. just don't have the resources to do what Nintendo have done here. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, Nintendo know their hardware better than anyone. And they, yeah. as you say, they have the resources to uh, to make sure their games are, are spot on. Mm. And um, yeah, they've, they've certainly implemented that in this game. Um, but yeah, you're right. Um, in terms of other people matching that or reaching that level, they would obviously need, I suppose, the hardware to be more capable. Yeah. So that if they do make a few mistakes or they, they don't have the... Uh, you have the expertise for yep. want of a better word because that's probably not the best word they can still achieve it exactly right yeah that's exactly it spot on but it, it's just a great game it isn't is it? a great game I mean I do think there are a couple of bits that they could have improved for this remaster okay um, for example I think it would have been nice if they'd implemented a, a fast travel for, right, for, this, okay. for this you know version it's not yeah. in the original and it's, as far as I've seen so far it's not in this one I'm pretty sure it's not mm. you know I mean again it's just convenience it's not about making the game mm. easier it's just as you get that bit older you know you just want to don't have to want to traipse through the same area again you know and um, I do think the map is a little unintuitive these days again it's it has that wireframe frame look to it mm -hmm. which um, is very appropriate but I just think it could have been slightly more interactive yeah you know but it's still a great game it's a shame it's not co-op I had this mental image of me like come on Glenn this way yeah leading you down the stairs it's just this way don't worry <laughs> just around the corner <laughs> Well, I mean, they did release uh, Metroid Prime Hunters. Oh, okay. I'm sure it was called Hunters, which was uh, like a tech demo that released with the original DS, Ooh. which was basically taking the Metroid Prime formula and mm -hmm. making it like a, this small multiplayer game. Yeah. Um, so it's, I mean, it's kind of been done before, so I suppose they could have implemented it in some way here. But I, I'll say, I mean, saying that, let's be fair and say that this is the best priced Nintendo game. First party. Yes. Nintendo. You know, they didn't muck about with this silly 50 price. No. Or 50 pound, sorry, price tag for uh, for their ports and remasters. Mm -hmm. like 35 pound, I think it is. 35 pounds times the inevitable three. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But if they're three good games, you know, it's... it's best of all the It's worlds, easier to swallow, way. isn't it? And the, the physical, I think it's dropped to about 30 quid already. And in fact, it got a physical. Because I know it's a first party release, but yeah. they don't, you know, with these stealth drops, they don't always... That's the kind of one I might actually buy. Yeah. yeah I bought some physical games last week it for the first time, didn't I? Yeah. One of which we're going to talk about uh, later on in the video, actually. But yeah, you did. You did. Result. Was, uh, that is a great little YouTube technique you just did there. I did. Yeah. yeah. Ties them to the video. It's a shame we're not going to talk about it straight after. Ah, uh, let me can't have everything, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Last but certainly not least, then we have No Man's Sky which I was playing yesterday and the day before. And it basically is probably, we said, the most patched up game of all time on the Nintendo Switch, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Now, I don't know if this was in there before, but I logged on today and my pet had laid an egg. So you could hatch little babies, little baby creatures. What do you think of that, Glenn? Uh, yeah. <laughs> It is a bit odd because I, I came around here obviously today this morning to record this with you and you were playing No Man's Sky mm. and I've, I'll be honest I've never really played it well not really I've, I've never played it I know of it yeah I own it I just I've never played it I just don't have time for games as big as this you know anymore I'll get to it one day but of all the things that I expected you to be doing yeah when I walked through the door you were petting a big ostrich I was petting it was it was uh yeah I haven't named it yet no I'm going to call it Big Ostrich. Big Ostrich, it's a good name. Yeah, it's a great name. Uh, Elmo, actually. <laughs> Big Bird. Big Bird. Just quit Big Bird. I'm going to call it Elmo. Oh. <laughs> That's upsetting. <laughs> But yeah, it's just one of those where you don't have to do anything. You know, I've yeah. quite happily pet Big Bird. <laughs> I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wife, if you're listening to this one. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I would quite happily spend my time, you know, cultivating a small farm of weird creatures. Yeah. And then yeah. go to, you saw me land on that new planet. I did, and, yeah. And the variety, you know, I landed in all these mountains and you never know what you're going to get. And mm. I said, you know, if you were a kid and you had this game, you'd, I'd, I'd have been in paradise, oh, honestly. All day long, yeah. To be honest, this channel probably wouldn't exist because <laughs> I'd still be in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's a fair point. It's, it, yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. I mean, it, this uh, it, it is incredible what games can be these yeah. days. You know, I'm not talking about, I'm I'm sure there were lots of issues at launch and as you said I'm sure it's had a lot of patching up but just in terms of um, of, of what you can do and, and mm. you know the the, uh, the freedom it gives you it is incredible it is it? it is and what I'd say is I feel like your time that you're investing in this at the moment is still for something that's yet to come Glenn was asking about the multiplayer yeah and if you've played it on PC it's incredible like the fact that you can build a base name planets and animals and things like that and then have some random stranger turn up and just visit you yeah yeah oh 
I, I'm a huge space nerd at the best of times. This is like, I could play this game forever, quite happily. Yeah. And, and you know, we all know the, the redemption arc that it's come through. Go out and buy it. So for me and, you know, the other four people in the world that haven't played it yet, yeah. what what do you actually do on the planet? Like once you've landed on it, so you said about cultivating farm and so is that what it's all about? Like building, I don't know, colonies or, or structures or... You've seen Big Bird, right? Uh, I saw Big Bird. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw well, Big Bird. it's one of those like Minecraft, you know, you can do whatever you do want. Do what you want, right. But there is a story in there as well. So it depends what mode you play. It's got um, survival, creative, something that I've just forgotten. <laughs> Adventure mode, something like that. Right. Um, and with finite resources, you obviously have to put fuel in your ship and stuff like that. And then yep. you can go out and start to follow this quest line that covers the whole galaxy. It will take you to different galaxies, make you investigate like old tablets and ruins and oh, things okay. like that. Right, yeah, so yeah. there's this massive storyline that, again, is way better in multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there is that if you want to do it. But if you don't, and that's where it's better, in my opinion, than something like Minecraft. I know Minecraft, they added adventure mode or something, and people could do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But here it's really a curated adventure within their procedurally generated yep. um, world, which I was saying, you can have billions of stars and things like yeah, that. Yeah. So a lot of people now, but now that they've added it in, will spend ages just building up their bases and getting it all purdy, you know, making everything look hunky-dory, tickety-boo. Mm. But the problem there is a lot of this is kind of showboating, right? You want people to come along and go, hey. Yeah, yeah, look at my crib. Nice yeah, yeah. thrusters. <laughs> I don't know why I use that as an example. No, I don't. But no. you can decorate and design. I think you can change the colours on ships and stuff like that. It is it's just that freedom? It's you. It's you with Lego. Yeah. Right. I give yeah, you a big yeah. box of Lego, and I'm like, all right, mate, make yeah. me a car. You're going to build a completely different one to I will, and then we're going to want to show each other. Yeah, I'll guarantee. I'll, I'll send a picture of it to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but you can't do that bit. Yeah. Can't do that yeah, bit. Yeah. Well, you, obviously you can do it. You can take a photo of the screen and send it to your no, mate. I mean, but, I mean, but not yeah, in the equivalent not, of you can't. Exactly. Go and see, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of why, it's a sandbox, isn't it? It's a play. It's a yes. playground. It's, it's Go out and do whatever you want, as long as it's within the confines of our game <laughs> and involving a big bird-like creature who's just laid an egg. <laughs> yeah. yeah, congratulations. By Thank the way, you. On that. What should I call it? Say. Actually, don't start that. Put little it in the comments. Bird. Little bird. Little, little bird. bird. Little bird. I'm gonna call it Elmo Two. Oh. <laughs> right. Uh, next game. Last game. Your last game. Yeah. Last game. The one that actually you mentioned that you bought physically, oh. um, it's Remnant from the Ashes. From the Ashes, which we played a, a heck of a lot of with Asdin from Grinning Wolf Games. On we the, did. Didn't we? On, yeah, last uh, last Friday, which is why I want to talk about it, because mm. obviously you reviewed it. Yep. So uh, obviously your take on it and the technical sp uh, standpoint of it and all that has been done. But it's not the sort of game I play often. Mm. Uh, I'm sure anyone that watches the channel now knows that I'm the old, uh, <laughs> sad old retro man. <laughs> so for me to play something like this is, is unusual, but yeah. I really enjoyed it. It was really good, yeah. wasn't it? And actually this can serve as our review of the co-op functions as well. Yeah, Because I couldn't talk about that. Yeah, 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 no, that's a good point. So we played it, Mark and I were in the same room. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, we played with Asdin from Green and Wolf Games um, and it was obviously online. And it was pretty um, decent. I mean, there was a tiny bit of lag, mm -hmm. but nothing that was going to affect the game. It was yeah. generally moving from area to area, not during combat, thankfully. Um, so that was good. And in terms of the, the mechanics, just again, you know, if you haven't seen the review or haven't played it, so it's a third person mm -hmm. shooter. Now, that was the first thing that surprised me because I was expecting very much it to be like a medieval <laughs> souls like. Get your halberd. Yeah, but it's not at all. It's uh, it's like a dystopian future, post apocalyptic, all that caper, yep. guns you know yep yep all that exactly right yeah it is it's, it feels more like Gears of War than it does Dark Souls mm. honestly um, but yeah. from my perspective I was really keen to see how that co-op would hold up on a technical level um, it's very seamless drop in and drop out once you've figured it out you know once you've realised that you haven't got your friend code showing and all that oh, all yeah. that malarkey that Nintendo do so badly <laughs> but then it's just one of you sets up a game and the rest can just join it if you, if, if that's the option that you've got it set up to yes, yeah. but you can take whoever's the host essentially it follows their story arc so if they're at a certain level in the game but follow them now one thing i do want to talk about which i thought was incredibly impressive that mm -hmm. i totally missed during the review was that when we played through together it was a completely different world yeah yeah so obviously i don't know what yours looked like when you played it initially but mm. there is some procedural generation there isn't there to then, some extent there has to be i don't know how they've done that to to make it look as good as an, uh, and as seamless as it does um it, and i also mentioned that it kind of reminded me of left for dead and it even more so reminded me of left for dead when we were playing it together yeah, and, and i don't mean that as an insult to the game i love left for dead mm. um but that, those moments where you have the huge like clunking one with the giant axe comes screaming in yeah. you know and you're both there fighting away one of you 
reviews off at the shops, but we won't <laughs> talk about that. It has those great moments. It's just, you know, it's difficult to recreate that. Yeah, and um, obviously we were in the same room, so it is, it is uh, difficult to gauge this completely, but obviously Asdin wasn't with us. And generally you you didn't, you know, voice chat would have been great, yeah. but you could get by without it, couldn't you? You could, yeah. I mean, Asdin did seem to wander off <laughs> every so often <laughs> and uh, turn up just as, you know, the great boss had fallen. And be like, oh, what yeah. have I missed? <laughs> yeah, we'd be like there panting, like, yeah. like sweat pouring down. He'd walk in and go, you're right, everyone. <laughs> just been to the shop. Coast is clear. <laughs> Is it? Walk past <laughs> yeah. is it really, Asdin? <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, it was good, Asdin. It was a good time. Um, but overall, yeah, for a co-op game, for a non-co-op game, it, they both work surprisingly well. There were a few people that worried about people online, but even on Friday night when we were having a look, there were about 10 servers that were nothing to do with us, yeah. with people in them. So yeah. at the moment, it's looking quite quite healthy. Mm. Yeah, I, it was just a lot of fun. I mean, I suppose the, uh, the last game I played that was like this, albeit that was first person was mm. dying light yeah which was is also a great game in uh in co-op but this is you know just as just as much fun really and for me at least you know for someone that doesn't dabble in that sort of uh gameplay often i, I really enjoyed it yeah do you know what we do need to make a new co-op list at some point with some of these more modern <laughs> games <laughs> is, that, is that a pop at me or is that? it's not a pop at you granddad i mean glenn <laughs> <laughs> yeah no yeah fair, fair enough yeah. i can't really argue against that but no yeah enjoyed this one actually really mm. enjoyed it's a good time. It was a good time. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'd if it would keep my interest in single player, me personally, but mm. um, I'll, I'll be more than up for a few, you know, co-op sessions for it. Lovely stuff. All right, so that is it for us. As always, please do let us know down in the comments what interesting games you've been playing, and we'll be giving away a copy of something. Depends what we got in the code box. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, remember, if, if you're writing about a game you've played, it doesn't have to be a good game. It's just a game you've played recently that you want to say something about. Mm. You know, it's just, just something interesting about it, good or bad. But yeah, please do let us know because that is the most interesting part of the video is reading your experiences uh, don't forget again as mark said at the start if you want to save a little bit of money on eShop cards you can use our website switchup.gg use the code switch up to save a little bit of money on those and uh, just another thank you to our, our patrons and our channel members for your continued support take care and until next time happy gaming